Welcome to the podcast once again. This is the Funny Old Game podcast named after a column that I used to write many moons ago when I met today's guest, which we were talking about. I'm sitting in the palatial surrounds uh, overlooking the botanical gardens and the swimming pool of Mr. Terry Kirkham, coach of Peninsula Power. TK, nice to talk to you again. Ah, I feel absolutely fantastic to be on the show. Good to talk to you again and I still remember that that <laughs> first day of... Uh, <laughs> That first day of our first meeting, and uh, it's something I'll, I'll never forget. It had been a long day for me, let's put it that way, and I think it was for you as well. I'd had a long day in church, I think. Uh, yeah, mine started at lunch about 12 o'clock, yeah. but I think we met at about <laughs> 9 that night. Yeah, that was about <laughs> six years ago, something like that. But uh, congratulations on the season. Everybody wrote you off, and I'm calling you Top 10 Terry because that's what everyone else calls you. You made the Top 10, you made the Top 4. You happy with where you finished? Oh, look, definitely. Um, you know, look. But you know, behind the scenes, the top four was was never out of my planning. It's um, you know, I, I probably felt um, when the top ten came out, I probably felt you know pretty disappointed that um, you know, after you know a pretty long sort of coaching career, I suppose, and doing quite well in Brisbane since I've been here, and then to come out of the MPL after starting a club from scratch yep. and just missing out on the top four twos in a row to come back into the Brisbane Premier League and um, you know, have to rebuild a club from scratch, but but not even be you know, regarded as being a, a potential top six um, well, outfit. Well, I tipped you to finish six. You can hit me well, I think most people did. I, yeah. You know, to be honest with you, um, you know, a lot of the projections that I got was anywhere from ninth to sixth. Yeah. And, you know, even from within our own club. And, you know, I just sat there very quietly and looked at everyone and, you know, I would never have, um, you know, thought of anything different. Yeah. I think I proved that at Moreton Bay. Yeah. In the MPL, and you know, I look at the that sort of thing and go, well, you know, we could have been in the top four. And then I look at when I first came to Brisbane and took Peninsula Power. You know, that mid-season, both teams hadn't even won a game, and and you know, we, we got out of relegation, and the next you know three or four years of success, you know, it was quite well documented. And, and I've done it in Melbourne as well with with two clubs, you know, previously where everyone was write-offs, and you know, and we went top four. Well, you got off to a rip. Raw and start first game. Well, obviously the, the first game was washed out. So your first game was at home against Mitchelton. Yep. People were tipping Mitchelton to be the gun, mind you, yep. and you beat them at home. Yep. Do you think that set the tone for your season? Oh, look, we well, we we'd sort of. I think we'd set the tone previous to that because yep. you know we 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 we'd done well in the Macron Cup. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and you know, and we we knocked off a couple of good sides there, and mm. and then the showings were there. You know, we we prepared well. We had a very short period of time because really November and December, we, we, we were left, I think, in December at one stage with 11 or 12 players at training. So, yeah. you know, it was a slow build. But the thing was is that the process from the, the training from day one, our philosophy, um, our processes did not change. So every time players came in, they stepped into our process. And, yeah. and I think that, um, you know, once again, we started very, very well. And the biggest thing about being at this level is then to be able to maintain – that level of professionalism where you can keep m that momentum going. And you know, I always thought, you know, we're going to get to a stage during the year where we're going to uh, come into a flat period and we're going to lose players and maybe not have the depth. And because that structure and training process system doesn't flow through at the moment through to the reserves to their under-18s and their under-16s, well, it's only at one level, yep. you know, we're going to have a flat period. And, you know, we did that and, you know, I think four or five weeks ago, you know, we were still a chance for second. But to be honest with you, um, you know, once we lost some key players and, yeah. and there's been names mentioned and you guys have written some names, but there's been names too that haven't been written up and two of our most... Like who? Um, well, you know, Zach Byrne, um, yeah. uh, who was our right back and Scott McNeil, our left back. Yeah, that's They were true. two of the most dominant players in the league this year, you know. Well, look, I did mention a couple of times through you know, the year that I thought that your season was built on how, how good your defence was. Well, Really we well organised and, and you just, you're great in the air and on the ground, you know, and I think well, that was the essence to it for well, me. For sure. Well, both those players there are also two on our right side and our left side were very, very attacking and we played that structure. Well, we lost both players, Zach, to a very bad stomach um, problem, which was become a medical problem and he had to go back home to the US. And Scott McNeil, who's, you know, who I thought this year has just been absolutely outstanding. I, I signed Scott when he was 16 or something, uh, whatever it was when he was at Peninsula as a kid, but, and he left and then he came back and then we took him to Morton Bay. But he, um, you know, we lost both those players at the same period of time. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, you know, then like every club goes through though, you then lose other key players to cards and whatever. And it definitely upset our structure, but to lose the, the two right-hand side and left-hand side for us, um, 
has caused us a bit of grief. And then, you know, and on the flip side, you know, we, we've had Stephen Cleary we've brought back from the lower leagues that everyone said was finished. He's done really well for us, Stephen, but the fact of the matter is playing in a key striking role hasn't scored goals. Yeah, that's, Matt Hornby's, yeah, once again, has had to battle injury again all year and hasn't scored goals. Chris Rolston's come in, has worked really, really hard, and once again, same with the rest of the playing group, a tremendous guy, never misses training, whatever, but hasn't scored goals. And... You know, and you, you sort of sit there and you look at that. And as I said to Sean and uh, Sean Furigal and a couple of boys recently, you know, if you put a number 10 in behind you and another striker that scored 13 goals or 14 or 15 goals along with you, then, you know, we're definitely a top two position. Yeah, so and do you think that's where you've, you've, you've lacked this year? Oh, look, for sure. Enough look, goals? look, without four. Because you've won a lot of games that were very close. No, no, we've won you know? the games, but we've also yeah. too had chances to put games away. And we yeah. just haven't had – we just haven't had that – Firepower of you know midfielders. Um, Jared Austin started to score goals recently. It's starting to happen though. Chris Swain starting to score goals. Jonathan Murray has come in, fantastic player, yep. scoring goals now. And uh, and I think the way that we've been training, uh, you know, Chris Rolston and Stephen Cleary starting to score goals. And but really, we've gone through the last five weeks of having to change a system and a structure to just tinker with it to try and get the players that are now scoring goals all on the park together. So is and that what's happened in the last thing. three weeks? Yeah, yeah, like everyone's pointing at Peninsula at the moment going, what's going on? Nah, look, there's nothing you know, going I mean, on. But yeah, you yeah. can honestly say, from from an outsider's point of view... For sure. You lost three games that we, we, we thought you'd win all. No, look, I, I, well, I think, I think first things first, yeah. all credit, all, Albany Creek... I've done very oh, well. Oh, yeah, of course. And at home, Absolutely that was have, a difficult yes. that was a difficult yep. task for us. Yeah, um, they've been one of the best sides in the second yeah, half. Yeah, look, I think, yeah. I think, you know, they've done really well. And, and once again, though, but playing at home, it's a, it was a 50-50 game. Yeah. And they won the 50-50 game. Yeah. And that Cameron Miller last goal was one of the best goals I've seen for a while. Um, you know, and I think that was a 50-50 game. I think that Kapalaba have been massively underrated all year. I, I think they're a very, very good ball side. If they keep developing and playing that same philosophy and the way they're playing for another year or so, they're going to be a very, very big handful. Well, they've just re-signed Herf again as coach. Well, you know, and, mate, you know, to be honest with you, you know, uh, you know, Herf's going to be like a Mooney. You know, he's going to he's going to, he's going going to to develop through that age group now like I did when I was in my 30s. And, yeah. you know, and you're going to develop as a coach are and the players are going to respond to you. Are you 30 already? I, I'm 28, <laughs> going on 36, technically 44. <laughs> yeah. And I've been getting away with that in the, the nightclubs Capalabar, over the years. But I mean, that was a big one that people noticed. But Capalaba, the problem they, from my point of view, they had all years, they've got the talent, but they haven't managed to harness it. No, I just think that they didn't get to artist it in the front third. You know, once again, they put it together through the middle of the park, but they just couldn't get that. That And once again, that's a training development thing for yeah. me, you know, to move from that back half to your middle third. If you're going to play like the way they are, to the front third. And, you know, I watched him a number of games and just thought that that's where they lost their creativity. Yeah. And, and they've got the players there. And I, and I think they're going to do that. And I think, you know, her farm, you know, he'll get all the respect of the players. He's going to be a developing yes, coach. He's not going to not sit out the back and not learn about the game. He's done his apprenticeship. He's come through, you know, as a player to the ladies. And once again, he's, a, he's a, as I said to you, he's, he's like a Mooney at their age group. They're coming through, they've done their apprenticeships, and they're learning. And, they're, and they're getting teams to play good football. And, you know, and I, and I think they're going to cause, you know, lots of people problems. I look at Steve Glockner. You know, I think what he's done at Eastern Suburbs over a longer period of time has been fantastic because he's cemented – he hasn't got the ball-playing side of um, of a Kapalabar-type style, but he's got everyone very well-structured, very well-organised. They've gone through a very, very tough patch and everyone stayed together. And, you know – you know, I have my sort of view on where we think we, we didn't put them away in the last game. We weren't good enough in certain areas and they've got weaknesses. But the thing is, he's got a stabilised, good, structured club as far yeah. as I'm concerned, just being on the outside. And, and as we just mentioned before we were on the air, the, the season was like the season when I first met you. And that yeah. for the first six or seven weeks, he couldn't win a trick. Yeah. And then he's just taken – I mean, this is, this is if you look at East in, since they won that first game, they, they've been – you know, close to the best team that's been in the league over a few years. Yeah, look, as I said, I, I just think that once again, they're they're over over that period. He, you know, under the the guidance and the way that they've done things there, they've they've kept a, a nucleus. You know, look at Tommy, right. the goalkeeper, right now. You, you yeah. just go through the, the yeah. Yeah, just go through elite, the elite support. Just team. go through good the way. just go through the the side, and they've got some good yeah. experience there. But once again, they're not they're not 
the, the ball playing flash yeah. type side. They're just well organised, well yeah. drilled, and you know, and once again, and that's taken them to second position. And you know, you look at Lions. You know, as I said to you, um, you know, fantastic. And Mooney's got them playing a great style, and of course, you know. You got to take your head off at Sam Steve as well because he's had to go into Mitchell and and you know and take a club from being used to being at at the next level down and coming through, you know, to taking him to the to the top four, and you know, and on their day, uh, and they play completely differently again. Yeah, they they're, they're, yeah. they're a bigger side and they're yeah. a more more stronger type side, but you know, on their day, um, you know, they're a problem as well. But the manager's the one who's taking the club there because many other people have tried and they haven't been able to do it. So it's a good time to bring into the equation. You're actually playing a game this weekend. You're playing at Mitchie and of course, I know Sam's a, he's a mate of yours and you know how he coaches and, and, and the style he plays and he knows yours. So I think it'll be a pretty good battle and I would, I would estimate that there's not many people out there that are going to pick a winner out of this one because it's going to be a tight game. What do you think about that? Well, I'll tell you what, there's two styles of Sam win, and Terry. You? You there's there's two win. styles of Sam and Terry. Yeah. Terry will be in his suit <laughs> and yes. Sam will be, I don't know. Sam will be wearing his Leeds United he'll, he'll track have suit. His, he'll have his Leeds United track suit on <laughs> or his Chelsea track suit or whichever, <laughs> one he's, whichever one's winning on the day. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, you know, I've got my professional bench sitting behind me. He's got his professional bench. And, of course, it's, uh, you know, never a shy bench over there with Mr. Jorkus running around. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Jorkus will be texting me during the game yep. and, you know, and trying to wind things up. But, look, it's going to be a, a fantastic game. We yeah, Last time we played there, it was 4-all. Oh, um, what a you game. You know, it was a, a humdinger. Possibly and, the um, game of the year. Close you to know, it. I thought it was. And, you know, there was there was some good goals and there was, <laughs> you know, I would say in that game there was one average goal conceded by both sides. And then, you know, and then, you know it was free kick and a penalty. And But the thing about it was, for me... Um, it was a, it was a, it was a fast, tough physical game. But both sides in the playing group and on the coaching side, you know, all respected each other, and, and everyone got on really well. And, and I think that, you know, what that leads for a, for a good game of football because, um, you know, both sides are going to want to try and play. Yeah. And we're certainly going there with, um, you know, with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, our game plan will be just to go from Reesby. To Furigal up in the box, just <laughs> yeah. put it over the top of everyone, and Sam will just and hope, it. and hope the ball bounce in, <laughs> and then Sam's going to want to put the ball down out of the back and try and play through us with fifty passes to try and score a goal. <laughs> That's but, right, you know, Mitchelson I, Salone. <laughs> 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 you just need Niall Quinn uh, up front, but yeah. as, as and I'm still thinking a, about bringing myself on. You yeah, well, I well, Leo Siriani's been playing in the Resi, so you know, he's what? Yeah, he played in the Resi's last week. Leo did. Jesus. The, you got a pay rise. Yeah. That's what happens. As far as your squad, uh, uh, you know, you don't need to give anything away, but um, you've had a few players out. How, how are you shaping up for this weekend as far no, as no, personnel? No, look, yeah, we have had a few players out and, you know, and, and but, you know, that's been no excuse. Um, this weekend, um, you know, we're, we're unsure on Sean. He's had a hamstring problem. Um, so we are unsure. He's 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 not training fully. Um, Trent McAvoy's, you know, not training fully. Um, he's been good for you this year. Trent's been brilliant. Yeah. And I think the thing about Trent is, for me, um, he's developed more as a centre-half. You can see it now and, you know, I, I think, you know, I think watching him now against where he likes to play in the midfield role, I think that, yeah. you know, he's uh, he's developed, you know, exceptionally well in there. He reads the game well. He's quick. He's fast. He's aggressive. Um, and I think with the ball in front of him, uh, you know, he's, he does well. And, I'm a, you know, huge rap. He's a professional, doesn't miss training. And, but he's like most of our boys, to be fair. We've got a very good group that, uh, that you know, all turn up to train. And they're all on time. And, uh, and, and I think that's another reason why the, the group's become quite close. But, you know, coming into the finals, uh, look, definitely, and I, I said it against Logan, you know, we saw the best of our developing group against Logan. That's the last time we've had that team on the park. And we're not far away from that team, except for maybe Scott McNeil, as I said, left back and Zach Byrne at right back. Yeah, so you're coming into this game and, and you've got, as you say, you've got a good squad. How's the feeling in the camp at the moment? Are you feeling like the team's in, in good shape mentally? Well, I, I would say that now. I think that's a very important thing, the, the mental aspect in, in, in the league, you know, Look, for any I, team. I would say that now. Um, you know, we, we talk about the three weeks where we lost games. You know, I've, I've had to put my hand up and take responsibility for that because, 
due to business commitments and family commitments in the state and whatever, I've missed a fair bit of time in that three or four weeks. And and um, and I think that that you know in the last two weeks where I've been in full time, once again this this feeling sort of comes back within the group. And sometimes I think that you know the the leader of the group and the captain's not playing or and some players aren't there and your head coach is yeah. in and out you know, it can be a bit destabilising. I think the last two weeks, so we've all been in and um, and we are building for the finals and there's no doubt that I think that in everyone's mind for the last three or four weeks, when we decided to change the structure because of the player losses, just to see what we could do, maybe to mix it up coming into the finals, may have sent a bit of a negative me- message through the group as well. So, you know, when we went to uni, it was, right, here's the clear message. This is exactly how we're going to play this week, next week, yep. the week after, week after. And no matter what happens in the game, we're going to continue to play that way and we are playing this way and we're going to train that way. Since that message and that clear message has gone back to the group, um, for sure, there's, the stakes have risen. Yep. Training's been very good. Uh, we've been sharp. We've been fast. It's intense. And, uh, and it can only lead to you know, some positive football. When we get out there on Saturday night, though, we're not interested in what the week after or the week after. When we get out there on Saturday night, um, it's just going to be how the game goes. Who gets into each other's 18-yard box or outside it and puts the ball in it and and, then, and and sloppy goals, you know. And as I said to the boys consistently, you can't go into a final system and concede a, not two or three, a sloppy goal. We're running out of time, but I've got to ask you, if you – if you lose on Saturday, just say you do lose, right? I mean, yep. it's possible. It's a game of football. The season's over. On Sunday, you look back and you finished fourth, got knocked out by Mitchelton. Would you think that was a fair achievement from where you were at the beginning of the season to where you are now? Um, no, I, know you, I know you like to achieve higher than that. No, look, for sure. I think that the start of the season, um, you know, for myself, I still believed that, you know, I, I looked at lines as the benchmark. Yeah. And everyone said to me, Lions going to win the league. Um, and, you know, when I looked at it on paper, I've gone, that's fair enough. Well, you know, when I came to Peninsula in the first year and we went from bottom to third bottom, I went to the presentation night, first time in Brisbane football, and I watched Kieran Cooper get all these awards and sitting up there having a great time. And I said to the vice president and everyone I was sitting with the table, so I'll be standing there next year. You know, and... <laughs> You know, and, and I told the club, and they all laughed, you know, and I said, we'll win the league within three years. They laughed. And you know, we beat the Raw. I said, well, we're going to beat the Raw on Tuesday night, and everyone laughed. You know, I, I sat there this year, to be honest with you, and I went, Lions is the top of the pick. That's where we need to be. And, you know, I'm disappointed um, that, that we didn't win the league. I'm very disappointed that we weren't sitting behind Lions a second. And well, you I'll worked make, for a long time, you were Yeah, but, but, you know, as I said... You know, I could have easily sat there and said three or four weeks ago, which I probably did in myself, going, look, job's done, we're there, and, you know, we're a potential to finish second. But when I kept looking at what was happening around us, going, well, we're going to struggle in some of these games, which we did. Yeah, I have to be honest, I didn't think you were going to catch Lions. No, I didn't think we were going to catch Lions. Look, the turning point for the season was when we went to Lions and the first penalty happened. We were 1-0 up. Yeah, that's right. And when that penalty was given against us... (coughs) That changed the, that 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 the season was won there and then. When Lions beat us at Lions, forget how it happened or whatever. The results stood and they were good enough and they're good enough. Um, they deserve to win the league. They're the best team in the league, and it shows on the stats. It shows in the wins losses. It shows everywhere across the park. However, for me, uh, start of the season to now, very disappointed that we're not there. However, I look back at the the season and sit there and realistically look at things and go how we started, the negativity that I had to deal with when I walked into the place again, everything we've had to do, the rebuilding, the the, the rumours, the, you know, a lot of the crap, to be honest with you, that I had to put up with, um, to sit there and go top four, well, job's done. But now I go, okay, that was last week. Uh, now I'm sitting there looking at grand final. Yep. And I'm looking at my children and I go, well, I want to beat my children because I want to beat Sam as well. He wants to beat me and we all want to sit there together. And there's no doubt... Um, We've just lost three in a row and we've won one. I don't want to lose a fourth one in five weeks. And when you have that attitude, then I go, well, I don't want to lose two in a row or three in a row. I now want to win three in a row. And if we win three in a row, we'll get the business done. You will. Thank you very much, Terry Kirkham, for being on the podcast today. Always an eloquent guest.
Oh, and no. I was showing retiring TK, as he's known around. Top 10 Terry. I'm calling you Top 10 Terry from now on. You definitely made the top 10. You made the top four. I sincerely wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thank you. I would love to see a great game. We're filming the game. Uh, we're not actually filming Lions East. We, we, we've decided to do the elimination finals, obviously. So uh, I won't be there. But I can watch yeah. it later. Yeah, no, no, no. Mate, I said, um, I always appreciated to be on. And, you know, yeah. I said, I think that the media component's got a big lot to do with it. But it, it's going to be a great game. And as I said, I know a lot of the boys yeah. personally they, over at Mitchie. Yeah, I'm expecting there'll be a big crowd, actually. Yeah, know a lot yeah. of people around Mitchie as well. And, yeah. um, and you know, both clubs got on well. And uh, we've got a bus and yeah. maybe a couple of buses going, I think. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's going to be well supported. And it's definitely going to be a very good game. All right, me and Terry are off to the Port Office Hotel before he goes to training. <laughs> I've been Phil Davis from the Washington line from time to time here in the magnificent surrounds of Shay Kirkham. We will be, on, well, all weekend we'll be covering football. The finals are on. Terry's excited. You can't see him. Big grin on his face. Oh, I'm pumped. Sorry. He's pumped. Thank you for listening. Once again, I'll talk to you next week with some other special guest. Yeah.